Welcome to problem one of the Computer Science 121 2013 Winter 2 Final Practice Exam Sample Problems. I'm just going to start by reading the prompt on this question. Determine whether the following statements are tautologies, so statements that are definitely true, contradictions, statements that are definitely false, or contingencies, statements that can be true or can be false, depending on the values we give to the variables in the statements or the definitions of domains and predicates in the expressions, the, the statements, if those statements statements are predicate logic statements and indicate our answer by circling one of tautology definitely true contradiction definitely false or contingency could be either one and we can use any technique we want like truth tables equivalences or proofs if we can prove a statement for example then the statement is a tautology if we can prove the negation of the statement then the statement is a contradiction Okay, so let's start with the first one. There's just two variables in this statement, so you could certainly write a truth table for this. It would only be four rows long. What I'm going to try to do instead is use logical equivalences first just to simplify things a little bit, and typically I'll try to get rid of conditionals. So let's just get rid of that conditional, and we'll get not Q and R or F. And right away we can see we can get rid of this or F or false, oring anything with false, is just going to give you back that thing that you started with. And that leaves us with not Q and R, and that's going to be true some of the time, and false some of the time, because Q and R will be true some of the time, when Q and R are both true, and false the rest of the time. So that's a contingency. We're not going to be able to prove that true or false. Okay, on to this next statement. We've got A or B, and the rest of this. I'm just going to start with the A or B part. If A or B is ever false, then the whole statement will be false because we're anding this together with the rest of it. And A or B can be false. Uh, if we make A and B both false, then this part will be false, which will make the whole statement false. So we know the statement can be false. If it can be false, then it cannot be a tautology. It could still be a contradiction, it could still be a contingency. The question at this point is, can this statement over here be true at the same time that this is true? Because if they're both true, then we'll get a true result. So let's see. To make this side true, we're going to have to have either A or B or both of them be true. So we're kind of concerned what happens over here if either A or B or both of them are true. Well, if one of these is true but not the other, then this whole left-hand side is false. And if the left side of a conditional is false, then the whole conditional is true. So we can actually make this statement true, it looks like, by making A true and B false. In that case, this side will be true. And since A is true and B is false, this will be false, which will make this side true as well, and the whole statement will be true. Now we know the statement can be true, which means it's not a contradiction, so in fact it's a contingency. It can be either one. Uh, notice, by the way, you could also have used logical equivalences on this problem. If I were doing that, probably again, the first thing I would have done is to get rid of that conditional on the right-hand side, and then try and simplify a bit until I can tell whether this is a tautology or a contra contradiction or a contingency. It's totally up to you. There are lots of methods that work well. So let's go down to the next problem now. I'm going to start by moving this negation inside just to make things simpler. So this negation is on a conditional. You could change that conditional to an or before moving the negation inside if you don't remember the negation of a conditional directly. But I remember the negation of a conditional is Q and R, the left hand side and not the right-hand side, not P or Q. So that's going to be equivalent to, let's just move this a little further in, Q and R and P and not Q. And I've got Q and not Q here. So Q and not Q will be false. That'll make the whole statement a contradiction. So this is, in fact, a contradiction. Let's move on to the next problem. P or Q or not P and Q. So that is, I'm just going to move the negation in here. P or Q or not P or not Q. OK, so this here we've got P or not P, or if you prefer, we've got Q or not Q. Either way, P or not P or Q or not Q is going to be true. When we or the rest of this together, we're going to get a tautology. 
something that's always true. And sure enough, think of it this way, if we make p true, then the whole statement is true because these are all ors here. And if we make p false, well then this and is false. And when we negate it, it becomes true. And because these are ors over here, the whole statement is true. Okay. So now I've got a whole bunch of predicate logic statements. I kind of prefer to use proof techniques to work on predicate logic statements first. You could certainly use logical equivalences or other approaches, but I feel very comfortable just trying out a proof to see what happens. And I do want to note, I think we skipped this when reading up at the top here, we are supposed to assume all domains have at least one element, so they're not empty. And that's going to change the rules just a little bit down here. For example, a universal with an empty domain is always true by default. And the reason for that is if we and something with true, and a universal is like a big and, then we're going to get true back. And if we and something with false, we'll always get false back. So false isn't really a good, if you like, base case for a universal, because it's not the identity element. It's not something that gives you back whatever you anded the original thing with. Similarly, an existential by default is going to be false. And I'll let you reason through why that might be, but it fits really well with our generalized De Morgan's law also. So if it, domains were allowed to be empty, then right away if we saw the outermost operator was a universal, we could say, well, this can't possibly be a contradiction because it can be true when the domain S is empty. But we can't cross that out here because we don't know for sure. Uh, well, actually, because we do know for sure that S is non-empty. So let's try proving this instead. I'm just going to erase what I have here to make it a little cleaner. If I were proving this, I would say without loss of generality, let x be an arbitrary element of s. We know there is at least one element of s. Assume p of x is true, and then I'm going to choose a y, and my y can be based on x because x has been handled earlier in my proof. So I get to choose y on the basis of x. Uh, and I do note that y is also being drawn from the same set as x. So I could, for example, choose y to be equal to x. So choose y such that p of y is true or x is not equal to y. Well, I can choose y not to be equal to x if there's more than one element in s. So this will certainly be true if there's more than one element in s, because then I can just choose a y that's not equal to x. I don't know for sure that there is more than one element. So what if I choose y equal to x? Well, I know p of x holds for x. So if I choose y equal to x, then p of y is also going to hold, and so this will be true. So I can prove this statement, and if I can prove it, then it is a tautology. Great. Let's move on to the next one. There is a y in s such that some property holds for that y, and I don't really know anything about q of y or p of y, because I don't really know anything about q or p. Uh, maybe Q is false for every element in S. Maybe S is the uh, the set of left-handed people in the class, and Q is uh, Y is right-handed. Well, in that case, that wouldn't be true for anyone in the class. Maybe it's true for everyone. Maybe it's true for someone. Uh, I don't know what S is. I don't know what Q is. I don't know what P is. So this could be true, or it could be false. It's going to be a contingency. Okay, let's try the next one. This is an and, so if I were proving it, I would try to prove the left-hand side and also prove the right-hand side. So let's give that a shot. I get to choose x from s. I get to choose y from s. And I'm going to try and choose them so they're not equal to each other. Now, we talked up here with this one about the fact that I can only choose them to be not equal to each other if s has at least two elements in it. I know s has at least one element in it, but that doesn't mean it has at least two. So if s has a cardinality larger than one, then this side will be true. But if has, S has a cardinality of exactly one, then this side will be false. So this side, at least, is a contingency. And because this is an and over here, what I know for sure is I can make the whole statement false. By having the cardinality of S be exactly one, I'm going to make the whole statement false. So this is not a tautology. I'm not going to be able to prove it. 
Okay, so let's look at the other side. And again, I'm just going to keep thinking about proving this, although at this point I'm starting to think about trying to disprove the whole thing, since I already know it's not a tautology. What I'm more interested in is, might it be a contradiction? So over here it says I need to choose a y such that for every x, x is equal to y. So there has to be a single element in S, and that element has to be the same as all elements in S. In other words, there can only be that one element in S. So in some sense, this side is saying the cardinality of S is greater than 1, and this side is saying the cardinality of S is equal to 1, and those can't be true at the same time. So that actually means that the whole statement is a contradiction. Either side of this statement is a contingency. We could make the left-hand side true. We could make the right-hand side true. But we can't make them both true at the same time. So this is going to be a contradiction. OK. Well, let's look at the final statement. For all x in t, this is our first appearance of a set other than s. Uh, there exists a y in s. So y and x are not drawn from the same set such that x equals y. So if these were the same set, if this was for all x in t, there is a y in t such that x is equal to y, I could definitely prove that. Because again, I get to choose y on the basis of x. right? So I could choose y to be equal to x if they were drawn from the same set. And then x equals y would just be true every time. Uh, by the way, up here, one of the problems was that I did not get to choose y on the basis of x, because I have to choose y before I've handled x. So that's why this one over here was only true if the cardinality of s was equal to 1. Down here, this one is true. Well, as it turns out, it's actually true regardless if they're both the same set, if both were drawn from the domain t. This statement would be true regardless, uh, even if the cardinality of t was 0, because in that case, if the cardinality of t were equal to 0, then, as we said above, the universal would be trivially true. Okay, But that's not the situation we're dealing with. These are not the same set. Uh, t and s are not the same, or at least they're not as far as we know. They could be different. We don't know anything about t and s. So can we choose a y equal to x? Well, you know, imagine t were the integers and s were the real numbers, then yes, we could. We can always choose a real number equal to an integer. We just choose that integer. But now imagine, well, we can imagine the other way around. Imagine t were the real numbers and s were the integers. There are plenty of real numbers where we can't choose an integer equal to that real number. Or t can be the set of colors supported in 24-bit color, and s can be the set of people in Computer Science 121. We're not going to be able to choose a person equal to every color. So the truth of this statement depends critically on what t and s are, and it is therefore a contingency. And that completes this problem.